until this year, coach, North Melbourne. Phil Cracker's playing, but Jimmy Cracker's not there because he was serving the last week of a six-week suspension that he uh, copped in that season for a little kicking incident. Hmm. Alan Jarrett it was. Did he Gee, get... they could play. Who the Crackers? Two Crackers together. They, they were, I don't know, you probably didn't because you were playing in that time, but I went a lot watch them when they first came over, Phil and Jimmy, at, uh, where was it, down at the Junction Oval at playing Fitzroy. They were just, they were just something else. Mm. They, had, they had uh, unbelievable communication. It looked like oh. it was uh, extra sensory. Oh, yeah. It was just, you know, it was really something to go and marvel at. We, I think we even played against them. They used to play for Claremont in mm. those night series, and they came across here and they just blitzed us. Well, they said they used to practice kicking goals between uh, shooting at limbs in a tree, and some of the goals they kicked, I can remember mm. some at night, you just think to yourself, where did they pull that one from? Mm. They were just, they were sensational. Yeah. Well, be that as it may, the partnership isn't there for this game because only Phil's playing, Jim's not there. Let's pick it up in the last quarter in 1985. Telecast of the 1985 Elimination Final going through ESPN and TSN in the United States and Canada. 17 points the difference at three-quarter time. North Melbourne a great fight back in the third term. Can they keep it up? Dimitriou, it's grabbed but not in possession of the ball. Gull here will now work wonders for North Melbourne, Pete. It certainly will. Little R. Siri, who's just about their best player, I would have thought. Hunter behind, can't take the mark. Meldrum. Long hand pass, it bounces okay for Road ultimately. Now he's got a hand pass over the top trying to find Corkamilas who got one in the back from Moore. A silly tackle. And right in front of the umpire too. And Corkamilas will take the free kick on right centre wing for Carlton. Trying to find McKenzie, he was well out of position. And the free kick going North Melbourne's way. Dimitriou onto Law. Law up towards the centre wing position at the back is Hunter. Great mark. Ken Hunter, one of the most versatile players on the Carlton side. John Law. And it's kick to kick at the moment. He's gone for a hand pass to Little Arsiri. 15 kicks to Arsiri. Dean got it to the back of Ross Glendinning. Glendinning certainly making sure the umpire saw that. And Glenn Diddy will take the free kick for a push in the back at the 92nd mark of the final term. No addition to the score so far. Glenn Diddy, a pass down to McCann, got two hands to it, picked up by Steele, snapshot of goal, won't quite be there. Alvin, backing up again is Hunter, just about everywhere it would seem. Reese Jones, Alvin, looking from left half-back flank, short pass, and it goes to Marku wearing jersey number 60. Ah, had a third quarter. I could almost say, but he was a very good player in the first two terms. Down towards Carlton to half forward line. North Melbourne through a fairly advised out towards the centre wing position. Johnston, Carlton skipper at our series. Johnston gets the hand pass out to Marku. Marku out there at half forward. Takes a wide circle, a hand pass back there to Reese Jones. He bought beautiful. Now he's collared, but he gets clear over to Murphy. Carlton messing about. We see the ball picked up by Corkamelis now into the goal square. Oh, two North Melbourne players clash. There's a chance for McCumble to kick a goal. He's kicked it too high, no distance at all. Punched away by Law. Coming back to Cork and Mielis, right on the boundary line. And the ball is still back in play. They won't force it over. Now it's through for one point. So it's three goals the difference. 18 points in favour of Carlton. Could have been costly. Certainly could have been. 14 11 95 Carlton to North Melbourne, 12 5 77. And North Melbourne, what a goal now in the next three or four minutes to really lift this team again, because they played great football in the third. Well, back there again, finally see Smith driving the ball out to half forward. Harms and Schimmelbush having a great battle there, but Schimmelbush coming out with it, but he can't pick it up, and it's over the line and out of bounds. At least he stopped the Carlton player from getting it back into attack. It's out of bounds on Carlton's half fourth on about 75 metres around from their goal. And they're in front by 18 points. Just on the three and a half minute mark of this uh, last quarter, the hand pass comes back to Marku. Our series grabbed him, he shrugged him off pretty well. Marku's played a very good game today as he goes for pass. Looking there for McKenzie, it's too long, and the ball is out of bounds. Would you say this is the scoring end, Bob, would you? I would imagine so, Lou, but there's nothing to worry about. If you're playing well enough, you can score at both ends. And it's a perfect day for football. Just on 50,000 people here to see this elimination final for 1985 as McClure gets the knockdown. Backing up well as fairly. 
Bailey's kick is out towards Glenn Denny. Got one hand to it, couldn't get the second. He spins out of the pack nicely. He certainly played a lot better uh, since half time. That's a long kick by Glenn Denning over the half forward line. And a great safe mark by English. A bad hand pass. A fumble goes on. It comes back to Cracker. Taps the ball on. He gets clear now. Melbourne's right after him. He's grabbed it. Nearly a free kick to him down there. I reckon he didn't have the ball. He was grabbed. Oh, the crowd going mad about that as Marku takes the mark out there at half back. Short pass and marked out there by Cork and Mendes again. He's been a pretty handy player for the Blues too. That's a good pass and Dean's got it out there towards the Carlton half forward line. Carlton settling down as they send the ball back over their half forward line. Matt got one under that. He's been pretty quiet back at the, since half time. As it goes back to Mc, uh, McClure, goes for hand pass, picked up by Crocker. Crocker's kick is out towards uh, Simmerbush and Road. He got one to go on with and the umpire was spotted that. He's got play on. Simmerbush could have taken the free kick, but now he's got another. And he hand passed the ball forward, and once you hand pass, if you get held in, it's holding them in. Simmerbush's kick, not a long one. Marku, I must agree with Lou, has done a very good job pulling in for Rod Ashman. 27 possession, so it's not really bad, is it? This is Melbourne now from right centre wing. Trying to find McKenzie. Good mark taken by Fairley. Quite a bit better since he went to set up back too, Bob. McClure is starting to look a little bit tired at the moment. Yeah. Maybe he is old, like you said, Lee. Load. Load is on the centre wing position. McClure getting underneath it. A few tired players out there now. All kicked out by Smith. Towards the centre wing position. Number two for North Melbourne. Hot. Reese Jones in pursuit. Will he catch him? No. Holt's already been penalised once today for running too far, and he certainly ran a fair bit then, but the mark taken by Hodgman, who's gone for a short pass, leading out Lindening, moving around a lot more, and he's well within kicking distance, about 40 metres from goal and directly in front. I don't know about you, Bob, but North look a little bit fresh for me than Carlton. I think they're putting in a bit more at the moment, Lou, and uh, if Lindening kicks this, only two kicks between them. He's kicked it, I think. Oh, we've got a ball game on our hands now. Glendinning puts through his second goal and North Melbourne sneak a little bit closer. 14 11, 95 to 13 5, 83 at BFL Park. The name of the game is Australia. This is great. You know, it's incredible the sound you get. Close your eyes, you, uh, you think you're in a concert hall. A multi-valve, 1.6-meter engine. Very nice. You know, you made my day with this buggy. Now, let me ask you, how much just for the radio? Celebration poster from Monday at Mitre 10. Yes, you can. Only at Mitre 10. The fantastic colours of BASF. Now with super impacted particles. The next big step in video performance. Right now on 2BS, it's 25 minutes to 3. Uh, don't forget, we're going to be with you right here. You can't change the situation. But how would you like a second chance to change your time? Can tyres make a difference? Good, you can. 25 degrees, it's a beautiful day, and the surf's up, so listen to this. <laughs> surf up for you. Hey. If it only saves you once a year, it's a good year. JV Hi-Fi is smashing prices this Sunday. All CDs are an extra 20% off their normal crazy prices. That means CDs from just 80 cents each. Stock up now for Christmas. It's one day only this Sunday at JB Hi-Fi. JB, you've done it again. Who holds the record for the most goals this season? Who holds the record for the highest score in a grand final? Who holds the record for the most games ever played? Who holds the record for the most premierships? And who holds the record for the most exciting grand final ever? 
your newsagent. Get hold of the special souvenir AFL Grand Final footy record. Out now. Bad English. Here's some great solid rock music that really ain't heavy on pure soft metal 4. Here's Mr. Big. 28 pure soft metal tracks. Rick Price. The finals. Scorpions. Don't go without this one. Pure Soft Metal 4. Two CDs of the best from Concept. It really ain't heavy. The big action movies are on 7 next week. Get ready for a surprise. Starting Sunday, see Hollywood's hottest stars. Matt Quay. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Who the hell am I? Sharon Stone. Give me something to dream about. Total Recall. Then Chad McQueen follows in his father's footsteps wow. in the premiere Martial Law. Then the training's over. It's a war. Nicolas Cage and the fugitives Tommy Lee Jones. In Firebirds. The big action movie starts Sunday on 7. Been getting second goal. North Melbourne now trailed by only 12 points. 95 plays 83 in the elimination final. Corker Mills. And it's Corker Mills going over the half forward line. The ball out there towards that position. Harms could. Oh, he's grabbed it. He's got it again. He's threw it away. But the umpire called play on. Fairly goes through the pack. He's grabbed. The umpire giving plenty of latitude out there, and rightly so. And it'll be a ball up on that half forward line from Carlton, about 75 metres out from their goal. Into this quarter by just over seven minutes. 95 plays, 83. 12 points the difference. Only two kicks in it. Well, no one got that knockout. Pushed on again. Finally picked up by Smith. Smith out towards Glenn Denning. Big Madden's there. Too tall for the pack and takes a great mark out there on the centre wing position. That's his 10th mark for the match, but he was pretty quiet in the third quarter. Ball hits the deck again. Fumbling going on. Law comes out. A left footer back there on the mark taken here by Demetrio. Rhodes got him collared, he can't get clear. He's going to get a 15-metre penalty. But this play, is... play for that and got it, Demetrio. <laughs> Short pass towards centre-half Ford Alvin missed that complete. There's a break now, hand pass coming to Phil Cracker. He's going to go for a hand pass. Over to a series, another one back here to McCann for goal number four. And it's a goal, the difference. And North Melbourne coming out like a house on fire. 14-11, 95 to 14-5, 89. And could it be the younger North Melbourne team will win this match because will youth win out, Bob Skilk? Well, they've really got things running for them at the moment. As Melbourne Alvin blue, Bob. missed it completely. It hasn't been his best day, and Phil Cracker could have had a shot, and as usual, used excellent handball. Uh, Siri likewise, and it finished off with McCann's fourth goal. Four goals for Stephen McCann. A kick in it now at BFL Park. A goal the difference in favour of Carlton. North Melbourne really fighting back as the ball is sent down there by Rowe. But in the way that time, I was Scrocker, and he played a fine game. This young 18-year-old at full back, he goes for a short pass. And Larkin's got him out the wing, and North Melbourne go deep into attack again. Out there towards Cracker and Alvin. Cracker plays it back into play. Alvin's on his tail. He fumbles. Cracker's grab didn't have the ball. They've got a free kick. And he's got a chance to land this right in the goals, but this fellow always does something with it. Reese Jones going mad about the decision. It was there all the way. Oh, there's no doubt about the free kick. As, uh, we, we see Cracker now playing it forward. He's not in possession and was held. Cracker's kick uh, ready for to go deep into attack in front of the goal, but there's big Matt going for that one. He won't drop that and takes a strong mark at fullback for Carl. Madden, mark number 11. Kick is short. Rhys Jones takes a very easy mark onto Alvin. Alvin at left half back playing for Carlton. He's gone around the boundary line towards Arms on the wing. And Carlton steadying down, but North Melbourne really coming right back at the Blues. In front is Ramsey. They've got one a bit high. Greg loses out. Got a free kick. Yes, he has. Murphy has gone for the hand pass, but the whistle had gone. They've got the cakewalk for Carlton in that second quarter. Full credit to North Melbourne, who really fought this game right back. Typical of John Kennedy coaching. Out of bounds, is it? No, boundary umpire said it's OK. It is now, I think. No. Oh, gee, that was close. That was very close. Schimmelbush, downfield. Hunter in there. Ball knocked on by Jonas. Now it will be surely out of bounds, and the boundary umpire will get the Bronx cheer. I thought it was out before. <laughs> They've really lived the... We this watch is the replay now. Oh, Certainly yeah. over. <laughs> 
It's a boundary throw in. Right forward pocket for the North Melbourne side. Or well, it could have been against Madden. Hodgman, Dimitriou, a shot at goal. Will it go through? Yes, it has! Oh, he's picked two. Here come the North Melbourne side. 14 11, 95 to 15 5, 95. It's level pegging in the elimination final. Well, as I said to you before, they look tired to meet Gout. And you've got to remember, they're a lot younger, North Melbourne, too. They're full of running now. Well, so their disposal up the ground is uh, nowhere near as good, Lou. And uh, it looks like Road uh, about to come off the ground. But uh, Carlton panicking with their kicking. They're going all over the ground. Their disposal poor. They're not looking where they're going. Whereas North Melbourne are very deliberate. Marcus Arnie on scores dead level in the elimination final. 11 and a quarter minutes gone. Which team is going to find mothballs for 1985? Shimmerbush. Oh, miraculous mark taken out there by Steele. North Melbourne lifting themselves everywhere. He's gone for a hand pass to Smith. Smith on right centre wing. Long kick down towards half forward. Two on one. Cracker throws it beautifully. Any score will put North Melbourne in front. And it's a goal! by North Melbourne from half-time, Bob, a marvellous effort by this young side. Yes, they went in at half-time, 31 points down, Lou, as we see the hand pass come out to Ross Smith from Seven's big league. It's the replay of Phil Cracker swooping on the ball, and what a dangerous player he's been. He's really worried Elvin White throughout the day. A goal the difference in favour of North Melbourne. How the uh, Titus turn towards uh, North Melbourne. We see uh, Hodgman trying to get through the back. Scraggly play there as uh, Mark Koo gets a wild hand pass back to Murphy. He fumbles the ball, tacks it on again. But they're on his tail. He can't get clear. Down he goes. They'll pounce on him. He gets the ball back. It's a bad hand pass. Over to Crocker. Back to Demetrio. Over to Shimabush. And the North Melbourne captain's clear as he sent it around towards their half forward line. And the ball is out of bounds. But at least it's in North Melbourne's attacking zone. About 65 metres around from their goal. And they're in front by six points. They weren't worth it. You wouldn't give them a, two cents of a chance at half time, Bob, would you? Not a chance, Lou. And five minutes after, even less. There we go now. Ball back into play again. Matt at the back there is Jonas. Missed it completely. Knocked on by Dean. Over to Demetrio. Short pass. It'll be OK. Marked here by Larkin. Larkin with a hand pass out to Hodge when he runs into trouble. It's a bad hand pass. It goes back to the Carlton skipper. Johnson out there. But half back takes a bit of a run. He's upended. The ball down over the half four line. Punched out again by Smith. In goes Law. A quick hand pass. That was strength out to steal. Back to Larkin. Out wide again. And the ball around that wing position. Smith goes for a pass. It's a beauty marked here by McDonald. Another hand pass over to McCann. Balks. A long hand pass again to Simmerwoods. He straightens up, fires at the goal. Let's see the result. It's a goal. Oh, North Melbourne are running hot. They're killing the blows at the moment. And what a miraculous recovery. 95 plays 107 in favour of the Kangaroos. Yeah, yeah. The name of the game is Australia. Oh! Lofty girl. Hey, this is new. Yeah, very nice. The old one went west in the storm along with the roof. It was 20 years old, but they replaced it with a brand new sofa. Yes, yes, yes. New for old. Most of them are doing it now. What about fair dinkum new for old? You know, with no surprises and nothing to leave you out of pocket. What sort of insurance company does that? Don't tell me. RACV Insurance. It's not just another insurance company. There's nothing more Australian than blowflies at a barbie, except the all-new Aussie Post. Covers all the things important to a bloke, including crime and girls. And this week, they've got the double, a cover girl who killed her old man. And sports, why top footy stars dream of death. Plus, this huge, free, double-sided footy poster. Razzed off reading about another rocky royal romance? Yeah. Learn a lot about Australia in the all-new Aussie Post. Out now. Hang on, this is my race. I've put a bet on at the TAB. Who are you on? It's Jenny. Huh? Oh, hey, Jen. The TAB. You've got to be in it to win it. Don't you know it's magic? 
Solomon's Big Double Carpet Clearance is on now. With limited stocks of this lovely premium plush for only $69.50 a metre. But hurry. Magic carpet, There's magic in a Solomon's carpet. Davy Hi-Fi is smashing prices this Sunday. All CDs are an extra 20% off their normal crazy prices. That means CDs from just 80 cents each. Stock up now for Christmas. It's one day only this Sunday at JB Hi-Fi. JB, you've done it again. When I fall... Give that someone special in your life something they'll treasure forever. The Golden Anniversary Album with Roberta Flack and John Roll. 28 specially selected songs that say I love you. Kenny Rogers, you decorated my life. Beautiful songs you'll play over and over again. For the one you love, the Golden Anniversary Album. Two CDs of beautiful music from Concept. It's a great day to be out on the road, but it could easily become the worst day of your life. You can't change the situation, but how would you like a second chance to choose your tyres? Can tyres make a difference? Good you can. If it only saves you once a year, it's a good year. Today, Seven celebrates all day, so join the millions around the world. Carlton, Essendon Live, The Clash of the Titans. Proudly presented by these sponsors, exclusively on Seven. Sunday, a special grand final edition of Sports World, as we review the AFL clash between Carlton and Essendon. Look ahead to the Rugby League clash between St George and Brisbane, and find out what getting the Olympics means to Australia on Sports World, Sunday on Seven. 7 to 95, North Melbourne by two goals, and what a turnaround after they trailed by 31 points at half time. They're making Carlton look pretty flat footed at the moment, but Carlton won't throw in the sponge. You can back that in. Rhys Jones to Johnston, their skipper. Johnston's gone up to left half forward. The mark is taken by McKenzie. And he's got a good pair of hands, this fellow. Goes for a short pass. Not too confident he's kicking. I was about to say he's not the best kick on the side. And Marku looks yes. in a little bit of bump. That's a hamstring for sure. hamstring, yes. On replay now. Well, these North Melbourne defenders must concentrate three times as much as they have been before, Bob, because this mob is experienced, Carlton, aren't they? they? Certainly are, Lou, and uh, there's still a long way to go. We're about midway through this final term, and uh, Marku... He's in a bit of trouble. I think he'll come straight off the ground, Lou. I, I doubt very much. I mean, Robertson saying uh, perhaps he has to take the kick. Well, what happens there, Bob, now? Can we... Uh, what's the uh, ruling there? Does he allow... Uh, if he can't kick it, can somebody else kick it for him? Well, I remember Lee Matthews taking a kick for Terry, Terry Wallace in the 83 grand final. Well, uh, Wallace was on the ground. Yeah, I know he was right. acting, but uh, he was on the ground. Whereas in this um, in, in this situation, Marku... And I think you'll find Marku hobbling off the ground anyway. So, uh, I, I think... Uh, evidence of the fact that Mark Hill is injured we can see him hobbling off the ground there now and I'm sure he will come straight off he's played a fine game too it's a bit of bad luck because he'd be one of their best players Mark McClure speaking of best players has also been a fine contributor for Carlton he's only 20 metres out directly in front goal umpire doesn't move it's a goal Carlton back in this match make no mistake about that Mark McClure putting through his third goal Carlton 15-11 now North Melbourne 17-5, it's six points the difference. Marku coming off, Buckley on. Mark McClure who kicked that goal uh, with uh, Marku's injury. Uh, whether it's just a cramp, but I feel the hamstring personally. It really looks that way, Bob, doesn't it? Well, as I doubt very much whether uh, Alex Marku will be playing next week, but one never knows. Six points the difference. It's a thriller in the elimination final. 107 to 101. At league headquarters, knocked away by McDonald. Dimitri, you just about caught with the ball. A chance for Law. His kick is only a short one. In front, Steele. Did he get one in the back? Umpire said yes, he did. He'll get a 15-metre penalty. Doesn't bother to take it. North Melbourne still with plenty of running. This is Larkin. Sidesteps Rhys Jones. Tries to get around Arms. Does so again around Rhys Jones. Bad handball. Over to Alvin. I think he might have been moved off cracker. Hunter. Rhys Jones. Caught. Good tackle, Smith. Loose ball, centre field. Mark Mazzani back on for Carlton. Johnston, their skipper, puts them forward again. Carlton answering the challenge, up to half forward. In front, McConville gets it straight to Ramsey, though. 
Ramsey's gone out wide for North Melbourne. And Smith coming in, he's just going at a can. There's no one there within the mile of him as he goes for a pass, looking for Steele. And Steele has the ball out there on the centre wing position. North Melbourne still a goal in front, 107 plays, 101. And the mark taken by the North Melbourne captain, Shimmerbush. The kick into the goal square. The pack fly, up they go, Glenn Denning and McCann. No one can take the mark, Silvani missed it. In they go now, Glenn Denning on the bottom of the pack. Let's go down to Peter McKenna quickly because he'll have a report on uh, Alex Marcou. Yes, Alex Marcou has uh, torn a hamstring. He'll take no further part in the game. Back to you. Thanks, uh, Peter. The ball up again in North Melbourne's forward pocket. Knocked out by McCann. That kick of Jonas was smothered. Going into meter now with Silvani right on the boundary. Oh, well smothered that time by Jonas. And North Melbourne playing desperate football. That's the sort of football that wins games. A goal of the difference into this last quarter by just over 18 minutes. A goal that uh, for here from North Melbourne will make it very difficult for Carlton. Did McCann get one on the back? The umpire taking no notice. That harms us grab. And the umpire said it's dropping the ball against it. It's a strong decision by the umpire. The right to take the kick now will be Holt. The ball into the goal square. Oh, then we got that Glenn Denning. Punched on again that time by uh, Muldrum. Over it goes now to Road. A hand pass back to Silvani. He missed that. He's got time to pick it up on the boundary line. Ball tapped away from the two uh, North Melbourne players messing about. Glenn Denning gets a hand pass out. The hand pass comes out to Murphy. Finally over to Melbourne out there at half back. He's got a paddock to run and not a North Melbourne within a mile of him as he goes for pass. Out there to McConville. Gets around Crocker. Balk a long hand pass coming back to Jimmy Buckley, replacing Mark Coo. Buckley's grabbed. Umpire Corp playing as it comes back to Rams. He goes down. They're really tackling both sides now. And the umpire's paying a free kick to North Melbourne. And that will release the pressure of Britain, relieve the pressure. Larkin's kick is back towards the centre of the ground. Plenty of jostling going on. There's big Madden going, couldn't hold the mark. Punched on by uh, Hodgman. A long hand pass coming back from Dean. Back to Johnson, he's dropped it, and it's holding the ball. North Melbourne, as I said before, playing desperate football. And the free kick to go to Larkin at centre half uh, back. North Melbourne in front by six points. We see Steele go for a pass out to Smith. Smith on the centre wing position, found Cracker on his own, and Cracker will give the hand pass over here to North Melbourne's captain. That Simmer was a long shot at goal. Will it come around and up? It won't come around and up, but that point could be, be very handy because it's put him seven points in front. And what a recovery by North Melbourne here, Peter, today. What a great game of football we're watching, too. Lou, one of the most exciting elimination finals after Carlton at home and hosed at half time. They may still win it if. Uh, they can stop this North Melbourne side. They deserve to win. Mark is out. Oh. Holt. Underneath it, two Carlton players. Big Madden and Corker Mealis. Madden chips it up short. English. Close to the boundary line, but he gets around Hodgman. Up the centre wing. Ramsey and Buckley. Who's going to win out here? Ramsey and Buckley still going. Buckley gets the front posse and well played by the Carlton veteran. Buckley on the McConville. A goal here would put Carlton only one point behind. McConville shoots it. Goal. And puts it through. Was it touched? It's a goal. <laughs> That's his third. One point the difference in the elimination final. 16 11, 107 to 17 6, 108. Marco getting ready to come back on the ground, Pete. Well, that's a pretty quick hamstring recovery, Bob, as we watch that goal again. Buckley on the McConville, and McConville putting it through for goal number three to make the difference one point. Now, well, I thought that Buckley did an extremely good job and set that goal up, and uh, when, he did, when he did that, I think they would have left him out there, Lou. Well, maybe it was just cramp, but they told Peter McKenna it was a hamstring. 21 and a quarter minutes gone. One point the difference as North Melbourne's run stopped. Can they get it out of the centre here? Hodgman can't. It's going to be a bounce, just wide of the centre circle. One point in it, we've got about nine minutes left for play. Nine minutes left approximately. Anybody's game, and what a thriller this has been. A great fight back by North Melbourne. Can Carlton answer it? Larkin. He lifted his game after half-time. Couldn't get a free kick there, no. North Melbourne fans certainly looking for one. I think it's against one. Larkin, Pete. He said, off the ball against Larkin. The free kick for Carlton will be taken by Marcazzani. Marcazzani out there on that uh, half-back flank position. Drives the ball, punched out by Crocker. The umpire's found a free kick against the young fellow. It goes to McConville for one on the shoulder. Across the centre half forward, coming in now to take the mark is Holt. 
He played on foolishly. Why didn't he stop? It's grabbed by Murphy. He's grabbed. The ball comes back now to McKenzie. A hurried kick down there towards the forward pocket, going after the steal, but it'll beat him. But it's easy from up here, Lou, but I think at three-quarter time, John Kennedy obviously told them to play on and get the ball moving. They've done that, and when Holt made a mistake by playing at the wrong time, you really cannot be critical. OK, Bob Skelton, 22 and a half minutes gone. A point the difference. The ball driven back uh, to half-back by Greg. Uh, Crocker dropped the mark. He's uh, pretty nervous as the ball finally comes out to work up the half-back line. Coming to meet this law, he's grabbed by Marcus Arnie. The ball pushed on out there towards... Uh, Demetrio, Demetrio's grabbed by the leg that time by Rowe, but he strikes him up clear and finally gets the kick out there looking for Crack, he's got the mark right on the boundary line of half forward. There's a pass by Cracker across to Hodgman. Hodgman now to centre half forward, a short pass, trying to find McCann, he does, he was grabbed, didn't have the ball that time, but picked up beautifully by Holt, runs to an open goal, fires, it'll be good, and North Melbourne seven points back in front, and that's Holt's second goal. So the scoreboard of the 23 and a half minute mark, it's North Melbourne, 18 goals, 6, 114. The Carlton, 16, 11, 107. And John Holt, one of the best players on the ground. The replay shows Cracker get it across, and Kim Hodgman going for the short pass. We saw McCann tackled, loses it. Holt picking the ball up and picking his second goal. And he's played a fine game out there on the wing for North Melbourne. Two goals to Holt. Four to McCann, two to Schimmelbush, two to Dimitriou. Seven points the difference, 114 to 107 in the elimination final. North Melbourne in front. Can they hang on? 24 minutes gone, so we're about a minute away from time on. But there will be probably about five minutes of extra time in this quarter. So plenty of time for either side to sew it up. A bounce again, just wide of the circle. Madden wins that one, but hits it straight down to Larkin. Alvin fighting Schimmelbush forward. A stalemate develops there, and it will once again be a bounce. Still inside the centre square. 114 to 107. Time ticking away. Madden and McDonald knocked down to Harms, actually. Harms' kick is a high one up to the half forward position for Carlton. Two Carlton players are there. McKenzie takes the mark, gets it back to Mark, who has the quickest recovery from the hamstring injury I've ever seen in my life. He's gone too far. I've never seen a fellow recover so quickly from a hamstring injury as that, Bob. And you've been going from the mystery. Uh, uh, well, we, we did say it once, so it may have been cramped, didn't we? Well, they did tell Peter McKenna down there it was a, a hamstring, but I'll tell you what, if they've got a miracle cure, I'd like to know what it is. He's created medical history, Pete. <laughs> Law takes the free kick. McDonald can't mark it. Schimmelbush, hurried hand pass. A good knock on. Reese Jones. Good tackle by Steele, holding the ball. Steele takes the free kick, so things perhaps falling into place for North Melbourne now. Doesn't want to have a kick, gets it back to McDonald. Might have a kick, Holt does. Only a short one though. Up the big Madden. Oh, he's got knocked rotten. No free kick for that either. Schimmelbush, with plenty of weight being used in there. Silvani, can't get clear. Now there's a free kick going Carlton's way. Big Madden got a nice old whack. Well, there he is in the hands of the trainers. Silvani takes the free kick for Carlton. It's up toward the centre wing position. Two on one. And the mark is taken by Matthew Larkin on right centre wing. We are one minute into time on. And it's seven points. Half time, Lou Larkin. Yes, he's been a very good player. Seven points the difference in favour of North Melbourne. There's Madden coming across after that uh, heavy knock and taking a great mark in defence out there at half back. 26 minutes gone. And North Melbourne are seven points in front. Can they hang on as the ball is punched out again by, uh, by Larkin? A scramble there. The umpire still calling play on. Breaking clear of the pack. Here's Murphy. Murphy goes for the long kick over the half forward line. And McClure is there about 60 metres out from goal. He quickly plays on. Hooks the ball back to the front of goals. Going over the ball is Road. Picked up again by North Melbourne. Over it goes to Steele. Still in the hand pass. Back here to Fairley. And North Melbourne take the ball away from the danger zone. They're playing with plenty of pep now, the Northerners, as the ball is knocked down there to Cork and Mill. It's not a good hand pass. Reese Jones tries to kick it off the ground. Gabbed by Lark, as Bob said before. Played a sensational game since half time to Glenn Denny. And time is running out for Carlton, I would say. A long hand pass over the cracker on his own. And this fella always does something with it. And look at him go. He gets a kick as he goes for a pass. Oh, well marked by Silvani down there at fullback. Still 
seven points the difference. Just over 27 minutes gone. I reckon about three minutes to go, Bob. Well, back now to Elvin. Elvin goes for a pass out wide. It's marked here by uh, Mark Goo, who had a bad a hamstring injury about three minutes ago, but he looks as though as fit as a fiddle now. Smith comes in. That's a great mark on the... Uh, on that half back one as he slipped to the ground. Now he's completely run out of legs. Luke. I reckon. I think we tipped that about uh, just into the uh, near the end of the third quarter. Getting out of the ball that time was Demetrio, but he's got plenty of time to recover. He picks it up, goes for a pass, looking for McCann. Silvani's there with him. McCann's got the run of the ball. Now he's clear. Boots the ball up there towards English at the back as Dwyer. He flies, couldn't hold the mark. In comes Jonas, tries to scoop it. Clear a head pass to a series. Over the Dwyer and the goal. That's it. Great play. That's it. The ball game over for Carlton. And they'll go out of football for sure for 1985. Scores Carlton 16 11, 107 North Melbourne. 196 120. Got to get the wheels in motion. motion, motion. Give your car a premium clean and go car wash at BP. Answer a simple trivia question and you could win a fantastic Mazda 121. And collect three wash dockets, answer the simple trivia questions and we'll give you a state lottery instant win ticket that could win you up to $25,000. Give your car a premium clean and go car wash and enter today. BP, on the move. What do you see when you look at me? Who I am or who I can be? Hey, I've always been around. You just gotta dig deeper down. And I feel better now. Yeah, I feel better. I feel better now. Wouldn't it be great if hair removal was as simple and painless as brushing? It would? Fed up with mitts, hot waxes, razors, bleaches, electrolysis, tweezers? Ah! You are? Well, we don't blame you. Introducing Aplon, an amazing, all-natural, all-over hair remover that's unbelievably easy and painless to use. And we 100% guarantee that it will leave your skin hair-free and baby smooth for up to 10 weeks, or we'll give you back your money. Up to now, hair removal was quite often not only painful, but expensive. Forget it! Watch as we use Aplon on this man's arm. It's easy, just squeeze a small amount into a ball, spread directly over the hair, count to three, then just slip it off. No redness, no irritation, and no hair for up to 10 weeks. And unlike wax, if you put it in the wrong place, it just slips off with water. For arms, legs, eyebrows, facial hair, underarms, or for a painless bikini line, it's simple. You know it works. It really does. For years I've looked for that one method that was not only safe but effective. It's Aplon. Most other methods took away the hair but left my skin red and irritated. But Aplon is made from natural ingredients, so no more redness, no more pain and no more allergies. I've tried everything. Shaving can be dangerous, bleaches smell, waxes are messy and tweezers, ouch. But with Aplon, the big production number is gone and so is the hair for months. Finally, there's a product that will keep hair off for up to 10 weeks. A product that is painless, easy to use, totally natural, and best of all, reusable over and over again. Aplon. Hair today, gone tomorrow is yours for a limited time only for just $29.95. Ring now. Ring now. But don't send any money. We'll bill you. Ring 008 023 025. But don't send any money. Ring now. He was a defenceless old man living in Camberwell. His wife and daughter found him bashed to death. A vicious, cowardly attack. A relaxing walk turns into a nightmare ordeal for a young man who was left unconscious by a merciless gang. Hurry up, boss! And a payroll heist by two men takes less than three minutes to commit. So like some persons who might know the identification of these offenders to come forward. Victorian police need your help. Join Ann Sanders on Australia's Most Wanted, Tuesday, 8.30. 120 to 107, 13 points the difference, Carlton can't win from here surely, they get the ball out of the centre up to their half forward line but as Bob said North Melbourne finishing a lot uh, fitter than the Blues at the moment as the ball comes out to the centre wing position, the umpire though has found a free kick, he's brought it right back to the half forward line, it's against John Holt. 
And who's going to take the free kick? Murphy. Long way from goal. The thing though that's important is the clock. It's 29 minutes into the term now. Fraser Murphy from left half forward flank. Trying to find McClure. McClure at the back. Here's a chance for Big Madden. McDonald right there with him. Here's the hand pass out the middle R Siri. R Siri onto Smith. He's played a great last quarter, Pete. Nine kicks for the quarter, Bob. Taking plenty of time because realising that Carlton have to get three scoring shots in to draw level. Knocked away by Hunter. It's out of bounds on centre wing. 29 and a half minutes gone at the elimination final. And so it's going to be North Melbourne to advance to the first semi-final. 120 to 107. Which is how it's the season's end for Carlton. Kick out of the air. Comes up towards the half-forward flank for North Melbourne. Good shepherd by McCann. Opens it up for Schimmelbusch, and there's still plenty of running in the old legs. Yet away he goes. Still well shepherded. There's a bit of a blue behind play in the meantime. Schimmelbusch, 10 metres out, doesn't have a shot at goal. He's gone for a pass, and he's found Glenn Gidding directly in front. What a piece of play. Lou, did you notice that nobody ran at him? That's right. They should have, because he could do anything wrong. He could fumble the ball. on a goal, Pete. Yes. Well, that really wraps it right up. That's his third. 26, 126, miraculous kicking. If the back men had run at him, though, Pete, there was no way known he would have been able to make that distance. That's right. But it matters not, and there's the man who kicked it, was Glendening, as we watch Schimmel Bush able to look behind him, and only just at the last minute did Silvani decide to leave his man. Well, it's 19 points, the difference now, just over the uh, 30 and a half minute mark of this uh, last quarter. And as Pete said, it'll be North Melbourne in the first semi-final. They've kicked 8-1 for the quarter, Luke. And they've played magnificent football. Carlton looking a very tired side. Knocked out by Matt. Bumbled by Johnson. Down goes McConville. Picked up by Lark. He's played a great second half. Over to Phil Drucker, who's lifted his game tremendously too. A very valuable player as the ball goes out wide towards that half ball. One thing to remember, Lou, is that Jim Cracker becomes available next week. That's right. That makes North Melbourne all the stronger. 31 minutes gone of this last quarter. But they could have a couple before the tribunal. Well, we'll, let, we'll wait and see. The ball ready to come into play now from uh, that centre wing position. 126. And next week, Keith Webb will top 300. 107. So it looks as though it's North Melbourne next week again. As there's the Sarah to win the game. And North Melbourne have won. 20 goals, 6 126, putting North Melbourne in the first semi final, defeating Carlton 16 11, 107. What a performance by, by Carlton and North Melbourne. Fantastic effort, Bob. It really was, Lou. Uh, 107 to 126, 31 points down at half time. And they're, del they're entitled to be absolutely delighted. If ever you have to admire a team of footballers, you must admire North Melbourne for their performance today. They look down and out five minutes into the third quarter. It looked as though Carlton were going to just run away and completely demoralise the young Northerners. But in complete reverse, uh, Carlton ran out of legs. North Melbourne rose to the occasion and uh, they have done John Kennedy proud. For the final scores, North Melbourne 20 goals, 6, 126 points to Carlton, 16, 11, 107 at VFL Park. So eight goals to two in the last quarter by North to overrun the Blues to win 20 goals, 6 to 16 goals, 11. McCann kicked four, Glendinning three, and for Carlton, McClure and McConville each kicked three goals. But Footscray rolled North in the first semi-final and of course 1985 was the year Essendon won their second successive flag and absolutely steamrolled. And I can remember thinking at the time, when Essendon had won 84 and 85, we were thinking, they'll win it for the next eight years. Mm -hmm. But it's too hard to do, isn't it? Well, it was. You always think that, don't you? The following year after you've seen a grand final, you said, yeah, they're pretty good. They'll do it again next year. Well, we said it about West Coast last year, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, that's right. That's right. But incidentally, that was the last game David Parkin coached Carlton in his first year. He um, got the bullet or the chopper after this game. That's right. Mm. Was replaced uh, by Robert Wall. Robert yeah, Walls. Robert Walls. Actually, they did and a Park and went to Fitzroy. That's right. Yes. I remember waiting in the dressing room, and waiting and waiting and waiting. There was a cameraman, me, and David Parkin, and oh, it wasn't quite midnight, but I just kept on waiting, and eventually he came out. I nabbed him. So what, what happened? Well, I said, uh, you know, shocking defeat and all that, and he said, hey. Don't ask me things like that, you know, it's a, it's a thing like that could just about cost you a job. And it was pretty prophetic. Well, yeah. there's a, there was a lot of rumours after Parkin left about the players. There seemed to be a lot of uh, unrest. Remember that? 
Well, I know, I, I, if I, again, my memory serves me, they went out and recruited and bought a team, didn't they? They bought a premiership. They got Kernahan, Bradley, Motley. Uh, that was in 86, wasn't it? Yeah, they, 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 after Park and uh, right, David yeah. left, they, they went and bought all these. Oh, there was another one. Dorit I think Dorotic came across. Yep. Uh, yes, and, uh, well, they more or less bought it. And, I think and they, they, they the missed flag it two years in later. In 87, under Yeah, Walls, under yeah. Robert Walls, yeah. 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 If I was to chuck out the year 1966 and the grand final, what do you remember? Was that when Gabbo went for a bounce? I'm not sure, but I know Ted Whitten said hit the boundary. <laughs> oh, did he? <laughs> and Mike Williamson said, I tipped this. <laughs> and it was probably. And Bush the... Gale said, oh, they're tired. <laughs> Three cut classic the atmosphere play. with yeah. a knife. But what about. Uh... What about the fact that uh, I've forgotten what I was going to say? <laughs> well, it's, it is late what or early. What about the fact, yeah. <laughs> well, it is early or late or whatever it is. Well, but... it, uh, give us a clue. How old were you in 66? I was um, five years old. In fact, I barracked for St Kilda for, the, for about uh, 18 and a half years. It took me half a year to, sw to swap over when I went to Melbourne. But uh, I can't remember that grand final. The first one I remember, I think, was in 1971 when... It was it 71 when Hawthorne yeah, beat Hawthorne. St Kilda? Yep. Oh, did we beat them? Yeah. We just. Well, I, I remember going to the toilets in the, in the oh, southern we're, we're, stand at really half at time. At half time, and I thought, the Saints have got this, but somehow they conspired to lose it. Well, they didn't conspire. What are we talking about?